Hey Fly Tires, welcome back. I'm Matt, and thank you for stopping by the channel. Now this next pattern is number 42 in the Great Smoky Mountain series. This is called a Black Winter Caddis. Now the caddis this imitates is pretty prevalent in some of the Smoky Mountain streams all up and down the, the Southern Appalachian Mountains. You'll find it hatching anywhere from December to March. Now it's a really tiny, tiny bug. I want to be tying this in a 16, but more common would be an 18 or 20, even down to a 22 if you could do that. And the bug is not exclusively in the Southern Appalachian, so you can find it up and down the East Coast and some of the other mountain ranges here. And if you'd like to research the entomology of this, just look up Dolophilodes distinctus. I'm sure there's a Wikipedia page on it. Now this bug is primarily one of the really dark caddises, um, mostly tied in black, but also a, a brown or even a dark olive. Now one change I've made from you know the recipe in Don Kirk's book is I add a, a little bit of an indicator on it. I fish this thing here in Maryland, and while it does float, it's pretty much an emerger. I mean, the hook point and the back of the body does ride down in the surface film. The only thing above the surface is the hackle. And if you're like me and you have a hard time seeing a black fly unless it's perfectly smooth water, you might need an indicator on it. So it's totally optional if you want to put one on or not, but if you need one to see, it's not a bad idea. Now there's not much history known about this pattern. It's another one of those that's a lot of people have probably come up with it over the years, but it's a pretty cool pattern. Very simple to tie. I think you're gonna like it. Let's give it a shot. So there it is, the Black Winter Caddis. Now it does look a little bit like a beetle, but a beetle is much bigger than this guy. I'm tying this on a size 16, and this is really as big as you'd wanna go with it. It's a Timco 7487, I think, which is just a curved shank little scud hook. So 70 denier thread in black. I'm just going to catch it in up the front. I'm not taking it all the way down to the back yet. Now the body is black two millimeter foam. I've cut the strip just a little bit wider than it is thick. And I'm going to snip a little point just to give me a tie in like that right there and we're going the length of the body the body comes up almost just to the the point of the hook so we'll want to catch this in about right here a couple of wraps to get it secure so it's not going to spin on you and then go ahead and just a couple more wraps to really bury that and now what we're going to do and really Turn it around in the, in the vise because we're going to wrap this well around the bend of the hook. So just kind of push it up, take your thread back, you know, touch and turns if you can. It doesn't necessarily matter. This part of the hook is not going to be seen. About right there. Now we can go ahead and catch this in. Just going to do a, a medium wrap at first, and then another one, and then a few tight wraps. So that's the back of our body where it's going to be right there. Now this underbody, what you'll want to do here is just take a few turns up, and we're basically we're going to make some small segments. It's not really for the segmentation; it's just to to make the underbody smaller. So we get a couple right there. Now a couple wraps right here, and you can pull them pretty tight. So we've just, you know, thinned out that underbody. Now we'll take our thread back up. We might need to rearrange in the hook again. Now fold this over. Leave your thread hanging right at the, at the front of that underbody. If you look at it, you can't really see the hook. They kind of wrapped all the way around, and that's fine. That's really what we want. So just fold this over and then don't leave it up big like a beetle. I'm pulling it pretty tight. And then a couple of tight turns right here. And there's our body, pretty simple. So I'll throw a few more turns right here, maybe even pull it up. I think that's gonna be fine. We're gonna go in here and snip this off pretty much as close as you can get it. It's not part of the fly, it's going to get buried. Okay, I think that's fine. That's not too much foam left. So 
as few wraps as you can get away with to really lock this in and, and make it flatter. Okay, now leave the hook or your thread just a little bit front and I'll show you why here. I'm putting an indicator on. I mentioned that I fish these with indicators because it does float, but it's not a real high floater. So whatever you use for your indicators, I'm using a white parapost wing. You could use any white, synthetic would be fine. So I will just take a, a strand, put it under my thread like that, and then pull it back and wrap my thread up over it. Might take a second, because I've got a little bit of a, a bump right there. Okay, well that took a minute, but you see I got, the, got it caught in all the way back to the body. And we'll trim that in just a second. So next thing we'll want to do, some brown dry fly hackle. Just small brown here. Let's flip it around concave side toward the hook. I've stripped off some of the, the stem there. And I left a little bit of that stem too long, so I'm gonna go ahead and trim it off. Now this next step is also optional, but I really like to do it. I think it, it makes it look just a little bit better. So I'm gonna put a little bit of black rabbit underbody here at the head. So not underbody, just I guess head. So just a small little tuft of rabbit dubbing and a pretty thin noodle, maybe, maybe two inches. Maybe not even that. I think that, that looks like about an inch and a half, but it should be enough to get a, a, a decent little head area right here. And I've got one long rabbit fiber right there we can trim. Okay, so there's my rabbit body. Now let's wrap this hackle. This is a pretty small feather. I've only got a few inches, so I'm gonna put it in my hackle pliers and then probably about four wraps. Okay, now that's where I wanna catch it off. Let me back this thread off one turn and go ahead two wraps here to secure this. I'm gonna leave that in while I clean up this head. Just ramp it back a little bit. Not too far back, but just enough to give us a room for a whip finish. And go ahead and snip this extra off. Now let's whip finish this. And I'll show you in a second how we want to trim that indicator. Uh, it's really your preference. Um, if you think about it, how much do you need to be able to see? And it probably doesn't take much. It probably takes a little bit less than you'd think. So I'm gonna cut it even shorter than the tops of those hackle. So that right there. Now the fish isn't gonna be able to see that. That's what the fish is gonna be looking at. And that's what the fisherman's gonna see. So a drop of head cement and this guy's ready to go in your box. So a black winter caddis, pretty cool pattern, pretty easy pattern. The smaller you can tie it, probably the better. So that's it, my friends. I appreciate you watching. Y'all take care. We'll see you next time.